Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the Revised General Test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 158, problem number 11. Today is our lesson number 63. Problem number 11. Let's take a look at it. Problem 11. We are told that uh, the relationship between the area of the circle and the circumference is given by, and they give you some formula which represents the relationship between the area of, area of a circle and the circumference of a circle. Before we worry about what the relationship is between the two, let's first ask ourselves what is an area of a circle and what is the circumference of a circle. We know that area A represents, I cannot write, I don't know why, A represents area of a circle, which which we know equals pi r squared. We know that pi r squared. Similarly, C represents the circumference. which we also know equals 2 times pi times r 2 times pi times r and here is what is given to us I should not have written all this bloody thing here because I hate to do my actual work at the bottom what is given is this a equals k times c squared. Well, a we know a the area of the circle a represents the area of a circle, which we know equals pi r squared. So I'm going to replace this a with pi r squared right here. Pi r squared. times equals k times c squared. c, we know c represents the circumference of a circle, which we also know equals 2 pi r. So we're going to replace this c with 2 pi r. 2 times pi times r, and the whole thing is being squared. That, that is the important part. Make sure that you understand that, that c is being squared, so the outside has to be squared. The rest is downhill. We're just going to work on this thing. I'm going to raise the top part, and we're going to work on that. pi r squared pi r squared equals k times 2 squared is 4 pi squared is pi squared r squared is just r squared that's it everything is being multiplied you understand now what do you notice I see a r squared here I see a r squared here if you were to divide both sides of the equation by r squared if you were to divide both sides of the equation by r squared, r squared would drop out. If you were to divide both sides of the equation by pi, if you were to divide both sides of the equation by pi, this pi will drop out and this will go away. That's it. So we are left with we are left with 1 equals here there's nothing left which is 1 equals 4 times k times pi. What is the question asking? What is the value of k? Well, value of k, well, I shouldn't have written it down then, is, is, is 4 times pi times k times k. And since we are interested in the value of k, divide both sides by 4 pi. 
Divide both sides by 4 pi. Both sides of the equation by 4 pi. That will get rid of this 4 pi. And voila. K equals this quantity right here. 1 over 4 pi. That's it. They're done. 1 over 4 pi. What I'm going to do now is to redo this thing here. It's starting from here. And a little bit slowly. Watch here. Pi r squared. Pi r squared equals k times 2 pi r all squared. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm redoing it, you understand? So this is k, 2 squared is 4, pi squared is 5 squared, r squared is r squared. This is the part I want you to understand, and this is pi r squared. I'm going to first do it in a baby step, and then I'm going to undo the baby step, I'm going to erase the baby step. Baby step is this, you divide this side of the equation by r squared, you divide this side of the equation by r squared, and as a result, and as a result, this r squared cancels out with this r squared, this r squared cancels out with this r squared. But, you don't have to show the baby step, you could have just gotten rid of the r squared, and understand that you're dividing both sides of the equation by r squared. I'm going to do the next step. Let's divide this side of the equation by pi, and let's divide this side of the equation by pi. So what we have here is pi squared over pi. Pi squared over pi. Watch how we, watch how we show it. Pi squared over pi is simply pi. This is, this is pi times pi over pi. So it drops out this pi and we left with just one pi. This is how we show it. This pi drops out and the square goes away. It's the raised to power first power. So I'm going to do that here now. This pi drops out. And this becomes 1. And we don't have to show this part. In other words, we're not showing the baby step. All the baby steps are gone. And what we left here is, this pi is gone, this r squared is gone, so what we left here is 1. 1 equals 4 times pi, 4 times pi, times k. This is my pi. I know pi is supposed to look something like this. But I'm lazy, this is my pi. Divide both sides by 4 pi. If you divide both sides by 4 pi, this 4 pi drops out, and there is your k. k equals 1 over 4k. And therefore the answer is 1 over 1 over 4 pi, I meant. k equals 1 over 4 pi. And the answer is a answer is A. That's it. That's all. We are done with that one. The one after that, the very bottom one that you see there on page 164, that's the nasty one. And again, as always, I have a choice of just getting the problem done for the sake of doing it as quickly as possible as I would do it and had it been a real exam, or to take my time and explain the steps, which takes a lot of time. But that's all right. We are here to learn. So I'm going to do the problem number 150. Problem. Uh, problem number 12 on page 158, the very bottom one, is going to take some time. Just like, just like uh, I spent almost half an hour doing problem number 7 on page 157. If you turn to the previous page, page 157, problem number 7, there's a formula that you're supposed to plug in and just do the bloody thing. That's only if you know, if you, that's, that's only if you know the formula and you understand where it's coming from. So that's why I spent half an hour to make you understand how to do the problem without having to memorize the formula. We'll get to number 12 tomorrow, okay? I'll see you then. Bye now.